Hi, and welcome to today's show. Heman Gaming asked me to do a new how-to segment for the Heman Gaming Station channel to help branch out and get new viewers who are interested in different things. So today's episode is going to be how to camp. And I'm going to tell you that you only need three, three different items. You're going to need a lighter. You're going to need a tent. And you're going to need an axe. Now let's do this. Hi, and welcome to Heman Gaming Station How To. And today we're going to be learning how to garden. Now you're going to need three basic things. You need a lighter. You need a tent. And you're going to need an axe. Let's do this. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to rob a convenience store. All you're going to need is this lighter, a tent, and an axe. All right, let's do this. It is with a heavy heart that I must announce the cancellation of Scott's how-to show. After a tragic shootout with the police, it's just not viable anymore. So with that, I'm going to refocus Heman Game Station back around video games like we used to. Uh, so, but I still want—I I want to do a top ten to honor Scott and his memory and his show. And so, while I can't think of any lighters or tents in video games, I can think of some axes. So, let's do this by rolling that title card. Hello, YouTube, and welcome to Game Games Top Ten Axes in Video Games. An opinion piece. Featuring Strain 42. Now, number 10 is probably just a flat out bad pick because it don't exist yet. But yeah, Breath of the Wild. And would you look at that? What's that in his hand? Why, it's an axe. So I'm 99% sure that this is gonna be a good game, but it, it ain't out yet. So, so when that video comes out, I'll make I'll make the axe right here a clickable annotation, and then and then you can click on it, and then I'll talk about all the great points of the axe. But for the next six months, uh, that looks pretty cool. Uh, go ahead and roll that title card. The Rune Hatchet from RuneScape. Man, I remember when I first got my hands on this thing. Uh, uh, hold on real quick. Uh, why are we rolling any footage? Oh yeah, I went to RuneScape and I couldn't get in. It has changed way too much, but I do remember it well. I was in the top 127,000 woodcutters in a game and, but with no footage to show, I'm, I'm changing the pick to the uh, Diamond Axe from Minecraft. They both have a bluish tint and they both turn trees into butter. The Diamond Axe. Well, it takes three diamonds to build and I only have two, huh? Well, Scott, I gladly accept your donation to the video to show the people the might of the axe. Check it out. The Wooden Axe ain't nothing. The Stone Axe may as well use my hands. The Iron Axe is nice, but nothing compared to the Diamond Axe. Takes them down in two strings. Man, I bet I can even use it to cut down the Super Ultra Super Tree. Yeah, I can. Actually, I made the Super Ultra Super Tree using one Diamond Axe, which is another reason it's up here. It's one durable wood splitter. Rising's Battle Axe. In Dead Rising, there are a lot of weapons in a lot of places, but if you make your pilgrimage to the antique store, the weapon bestowed upon you is the Battle Axe, an awesome golden blade with a super wide death radius, perfect for cutting swaths of zombies down. But I think the thing that makes the axe just a cut above the other weapons in Willamette Mall is that if you hold down the attack button like Link in The Legend of Zelda, you can unleash your remarkable spin move, slice and dice! Just don't use it too much or you'll get dizzy and then get eaten to death. Yep, the battle axe is a pretty sweet weapon. I bet I could even defeat Larry with it. If I was okay with attacking Larry, but I'm not going to attack Larry because he's a cool bro as I mentioned in my Dead Rising video. If you don't attack me, there's no way I'm attacking you. Carlito, on the other hand, wow! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Just like a rag doll.
the Fireman's Axe from Left 4 Dead 2. So what makes the Fireman's Axe from Left 4 Dead 2 so special? Uh, well, nothing really. But it has all the same attributes as the melee weapons from the game. So I'll just say all the positive things about melee weapons, attribute them to the Fireman's Axe, and then put it in the top 10. Okay? Okay. The Fireman's Axe from Left 4 Dead 2 is an excellent option in the game, especially as a backup weapon. Sure, it doesn't have the range of a pistol, but you know what it does have? Huge damage and an unlimited clip. Even with guns in the games, you need to stop swinging after a while, but the axe is a non-stop killing machine. Excellent if you find yourself covered in boomer bile, or heck, any other special infected. Yep. If I can't find myself a Desert Eagle, my favorite sidearm in the game Left 4 Dead is the Fireman's Axe. Can you say viewer submission? All right, we got the same suggestion from two people, the Castlevania Axe. At the time, I didn't think I would put it on the list because I don't have Castlevania, but recently I've stumbled into a library of NES games. So I started up Castlevania just to get the axe and say, yeah, it's pretty good. Well, I was wrong. It's not good. It's the best weapon in the whole game. Knife, boomerang cross, stopwatch. Nah, who needs them? If I want to kill something in front of me, I'll walk up and whip it. But in a devilishly designed game, the ability to attack upwards is more of a godsend than the cross. And fortunately, they give it to you right before the bat boss. And let me be honest, being raised without an NES, there is no way I could ever have beaten the bat without the axe. My favorite weapon from Castlevania. Skyrim HD! I honestly don't see any difference. The shorter load times though are amazing. So yeah, there are two unique axes in this game. One is called Wuth, uh, Wuth, what rad, one bad, I, I, I don't know how to say it. It's spelled like this, so if I can't pronounce it, I certainly ain't picking it. So that leaves the Rueful Axe. There once was a man named Sebastian Lort. I killed him. he was alive, his daughter got turned into a werewolf. He prayed to the Daedra, Clavicus Vile, for a way to cure her of her lycanthropy. And Clavicus gave him an axe. Well, it turns out the Vile wants his axe back and offers it to you, but to get it you need to kill Barbus. What? I don't want to kill him! So I take the axe and then just run away, screwing over a Daedra? I'm sure everything will be just fine. Wouldn't that be cool for the next Elder Scroll games? Have Clavicus Vile's quest be to hunt down someone who's refused to kill Barbus and kill them for the axe. But the guy who has the axe also has Barbus following him around and says that if you let him live, Barbus will tell you where the mask Clavicus Vile is. There you go. Free quest idea for you, Bethesda. Holy cow, when I asked for suggestions for axes, the comments went crazy with Fire Emblem picks. But I suppose when your popularity comes from lots of Fire Emblem coverage, I suppose that's to be suspected. So let's open up the handy dandy Fire Emblem art book and see what we've got in the way of unique axes. The Wolfberg? Nice! The Conqueror's Axe, wielded by an awesome dude to kill an even more awesome dude. Ooh, or how about Hellswath? Perfect for cutting a swath through hell. Tomahawk gives you range, Oh, but the Brave Axe lets you strike a bunch of times! It's hard to decide a clear winner, but in a game with three legendary regalia and an axe being wielded by Ike himself, I think I need to go with Arminus. Watch Ike's grandson do over 190 damage. Arminus is a good weapon, and according to the book, it has an eye. Nah, guys, I'm just screwing with you. We all know that the best axe in the game is the ladle. Dinner is served! Animal Crossing's axe! It's great! You can chop down trees, you can chop rocks, you can chop houses, you can chop neighbors! But eventually your fun comes to an end. But it doesn't have to if you have the golden axe. 
but that's impossible to get and you need to have a perfect town for 15 days. Over 50 flowers, 150 trees, no dropped items, and if weed grows, you are screwed. And weeds always grow! Besides, look at my town. I'm never gonna be able to clean this place. It's got over a thousand weeds, and that's only because an invasive bamboo has destroyed half the town. I'd really like the golden axe to clear it, but, well, actually, in New Leaf, the Golden Axe is quite easy to acquire. Just purchase 50 tree saplings. So I buy the 50 baby trees, and just like that, the item I've always coveted is in my hands. The bamboo shall tremble and fall. I shall reclaim this village. Chop, chop, and heathens drop. This village is mine. <laughs> At last, the bamboo is gone. But that was so much fun. I think I'll take down just another tree or two. <laughs> yes! 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 No, no. I sit here, a man who was given too much power. In my sap lust, I single-handedly destroyed the entire ecosystem of the town I had nurtured for four years. The axe never should have come to me. I guess all I can do now is sit here and the last pair I'll ever enjoy. Oh yeah, and reset. Come at me, mole man! So Animal Crossing and Harvest Moon were much lower on the list because I didn't plan on doing the extra work for their super amazing axes. I am just fine with the Mistral Axe. Look, cut the wood, get the wood. I don't need the Blessed Axe for that. Well, you know, it's not actually that hard to get the Blessed Axe. If you cheat, the tools are always on the same floor. Save right before you go to that floor and keep trying until you get it. Hey, look, the Cursed Axe! Now the Cursed Axe is pretty good, but the curse makes it so you can never unequip it, and it drains your stamina like a vampiric bloodsucker. No thanks! But if you give 100,000 money to the churchman, he will bless the axe. Now I have the powers of a literal god, which I shall demonstrate. Okay, watch closely, because I can only do this once, and it takes literal years of prep. Remember how PBG made a Skyrim joke with the golden watering can once? Well, if a foos wrote down, was ever called for in the game, I think it's here. Fools, raw, ha, me, Dolkin! <laughs> that was awesome. All right, that's a wrap. I think that just about cuts it. All we have left now is number one. So, in the previous video, I asked for suggestions to put on this list, and you've seen a few of them so far. But then a YouTuber named Strain42 went to his faithful backup of Persona and told me about one axe from that game. I was so thoroughly impressed by his description of it that I asked him to come here himself and tell you all about the number one pick. So everyone give a marvelous hello to Strain42. Take it away, man! Thanks, Chet, and a marvelous hello to you all. You know, when I first heard you were going to be doing a video on the top 10 axes in video games, my mind instantly jumped to Labrys' axe from the Persona 4 Arena games. Now granted, I didn't initially think it was going to get the top spot, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized just how awesome this axe is and how it does deserve to be up here. Would you mind explaining what makes it so special? I'll do you one better. I'll explain my point in song. Really? No. That would be a terrible idea. Aww. But that doesn't mean that this thing isn't awesome. I mean, first of all, just look at it. It's collapsible, portable, efficient, sleek, mechanical, plus it's huge. And come on, who doesn't love a robot girl with a nice big round X? Wait, did you just say- I mean, Labrys was literally named after this thing. Before showing off to the scientists how skillful she was with that axe, she was just named Unit Number 031. And see that little axe icon in the corner down there? Yeah, that's her axe getting stronger and stronger the more she uses it. This axe does more damage the more she beats people up with it. And if all that wasn't enough, once she's done completely obliterating her opponents with an axe that's bigger than they are, 
She can just clip it onto her back like a pair of butterfly wings and fly away. Ah, that's really nice. I thought so too. And so for all those reasons, and probably a few I didn't even touch base on, I'm calling Labrys' axe the number one axe in video games. Hey, thanks for letting me talk about this, Chad. I had a lot of fun. Back to you, man. Thank you very much, Shrain, and to all the people who suggested things for the video, and even you for watching the whole thing. Right now, I'm taking suggestions for the final Human Gamer Station video of the year. The top 10 Christmas levels in gaming. And I'm, I'm not talking winter levels here, I'm talking Christmas specifically. I mean Santa Clauses, I mean decorated trees, I mean baby Jesus. Actually, no, no, I, I don't think there's actually in any video games. But, but if it's a Christmas level, go ahead and throw it my way, and if I decide to use it, I'll put your username in the number card for the, in the countdown. Uh, until then, Happy Thanksgiving! Alright, we come to the close of this video, and I just need to thank Strain42 one more time. He's hoping to have at least 300 subs by Christmas. How about you help me get it to him for Black Friday? I'm personally a fan of him and have been subscribed to him for over a year. He makes really good and varied content and is all around just a real great guy. You can click on that circle to subscribe to him or a video to watch what he's all about. I'm partial to that one myself. And for my side of things, I just started a Nuzlocke for Pokemon Moon on my gameplay channel. I had a lot of fun after after the first half hour, and I hope to get a video uploaded every odd numbered day. Uh, also I suppose there's room for my most recent top 10, top 10 law enforcers in video games. But with whatever you decide to do, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.